There is a legend that Isaac Newton once had a dog named Diamond that knocked over a candle and set fire to years of his work on the laws of physics. Historians think that this might be fiction from Newton, but unfortunately, unlike Newton, laboratory fires can be very, very real. Today, we go speak to a scientist who was familiar with the story of a lab from our grad school years that might have had its own Newton-style accidental disaster. And it actually ended up in the Weekly World News, where the title was Bumbling Scientist Attempts to Put Out Fire with Flammable Liquid. I'm Dr. Michelle Sulikowski. I'm a faculty member in the chemistry department at Vanderbilt University, and I teach organic chemistry and food chemistry. This particular reaction that my colleague was running, they were trying to make an ether using sodium hydride and methyl iodide. Sodium hydride is a base that we use, and it's very flammable when it's exposed to water. So for my colleague, the actual reaction itself went well, and the workup of the reaction went without incidents. My colleague then went to wash the glassware from that reaction in their sink, there was some acetone in the sink. Acetone, otherwise known as nail polish remover, is a substance we use to clean any residual water out of our glassware that we use for reactions. When the student was cleaning the glassware, there must have been a small amount of sodium hydride left and it caught the acetone on fire. There was another student in the lab who saw the fire, saw a bucket of clear colorless liquid on the floor and threw that bucket of liquid onto the fire thinking it was water. It turns out that it was isopropyl alcohol. It accelerated the fire. The fire went from the sink up the wall and over the ceiling. Every student in lab, well trained in fire safety, ran to the hallway, got fire extinguishers, and after they extinguished five fire extinguishers made the decision to close the lab, secure any other flammable mo molecules or compounds that were present, left the lab, pulled the alarm, and called the fire department. The entire lab burned down because someone mistaked water and isopropanol. Five fire extinguishers couldn't stop that flame. I think we might have all grown up hearing that isopropyl, or rubbing alcohol, could be flammable, but what exactly made this fire so potent to the point where even five fire extinguishers could not stop it? Here is the equation for a fire. This is called a combustion reaction. Very simply, fires need carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens to get started. Why is this reaction so destructive, though? Bonds have all this potential energy stored up inside of them, and when they break, all of that energy is released. When a lot of this energy is released and is released very quickly, we get a lot of energy turned into heat, which can cause fire. Usually once a fire is started, it does all it can to keep going. It wants to make all of its bonds break down to this lower energy state. We can stop fires by removing reactants or diverting the heat. Therefore, we put sand or water on fires. The water can take up some of the heat and sand can block oxygen from the air. Isopropanol kind of does the opposite of this. It doesn't divert much heat, and it boils off really easily. If we look at the components of isopropanol, we see that these new oxygenated molecules are exactly what is needed to fuel the combustion reaction. This seems so scary, and people are in labs every day and still manage to somehow remain safe. How do we prevent accidents like this one? One way we can prevent them is by accessing things that we call material safety data sheets, which tell us about the safety of the chemicals that we will be using. And we can also research experimental protocols that will help us conduct experiments in a safe fashion. So this means if we have flammable solvents around, having buckets of sand available to quench the fire, or having other appropriate means in play that we can readily access 
and allowing other people in the lab to know when we are doing something that has the potential to be dangerous so that they may intervene correctly should that occur. On average, every 23 seconds, fire departments respond to a fire. Ovens get left on, grease bubbles over, stakes go wrong. People are unprepared, but in a lab, fires can be expected. In laboratories, there is an abundance of caution and training, but accidents still happen. Being aware of what substances surround you is super important, where years of data could turn into the equivalent of Newtonian fiction. Thank you for watching this episode of A Laboratory Horror Story, written and produced by Cheryl Guate. Special thanks to Matt Oakley, Kirk Osamayo, Halsna CC0, and Ho Jose Travieso for the music clips courtesy of Free Music Archive. Another thanks to Pexels, Vidvio, and Aluna Blue for some of the clips used in this video. Tune in next time for another episode of Laboratory Horror Story.